Greetings folks, Two and Proper here bringing you yet another in my series. And here I'm bringing you a couple of old Cold War veterans. That is right. But wait, wait, let's check that. They're not old, because I'm a Cold War veteran. Mm, let's just soften this for me and call them uh, Cold War foes. Okay, we'll go with that. Cold War foes, because they ain't old. Anyway... I am too improper. And right here, we're going to do a comparison between the two of these two. However, it's not a versus. I don't like the versus format. A lot of these people get two or three guns, and they're gun number one versus gun number two. Gun number two versus gun number one. Gun number one versus gun number three. Gun number three versus gun number two. And it just goes on and on. And yes, we get it. You got three pistols. Anyway, I don't like the versus format also because each of the different guns has something to offer. Okay, so where one lacks in one thing, another is going to pick up in another thing, right? And then again, when it all boils down to it, whichever gun you choose is subjective. So what we have here is a couple of Cold War foes. We've got Nikolai Makarov's Pistola Makarov 9x18, and we've got John Browning's 1911. Although these two particular examples... This is a Bulgarian Makarov from 1989, and this is a ATI M1911 from, I assume, a couple of years ago. But we're going to let these stand as our representatives of the Cold War because they are the same models of pistol. The Makarov versus the 1911 without the versus. So here we go. Now, each of these two guns, I love each of these guns, and I love shooting them. Shooting old pistols is just, oh, it's a weakness of mine. I love these old pistols. Absolutely love these surplus pistols, these war pistols. And there's just something about them that just tells you that it's a sturdily made, if that's a word, pistol, and very, very hardy to shoot. Weighty, metal, wood, the good old stuff. So, Let's take each of these guns and let's go into the specs on each. And we'll start with the Makarov over here. Now the Makarov is the most concealable of the two. For modern day purposes, we'll go ahead with concealability. Uh, they're both military pistols, but a lot of people are carrying the Makarov because it is only 6.36 inches long. This way. And it is only 4.49 inches high. So that's not a very tall pistol. Let me adjust the light here. 4.49 inches high. So that's not a very tall pistol, and that's what makes this concealable. Besides being only 28 ounces. Yeah, it's a solid steel pistol. This is not polymer. And everything is pretty much traditional on this thing. But it is only 1.16 inches wide. It is a very thin pistol. And it's got a 3.6 inch barrel. But another thing about the Makarov, which is fantastic, is that it is so easy to take down, especially when you compare it to the 1911. The Makarov is easy to take down. As easy as this, using the European butt style magazine release, pulling out the surplus magazine here, and you check your pistol, make sure it's clear. You pull your trigger guard off and just set it off to the side a little bit. Just cant it off to the side. Pull back. Pull back on the rear and let it slide off with the weight of the spring. And here you go. Right? Pistola Makarov. And those of you who have Bursa Thunders, Walther PPKs, etc., etc., this is going to look very familiar to you. And it's just as easy to clean as you can see. And it's just as easy to reassemble. So you make sure your trigger is still off. Put your spring on. Feed this through. Get your rear back on. Like that. Put your trigger back into position. Just like that. Function check. Disco. Very easy. Now comparatively, the 1911 is a bear to take apart. Especially if you've got yourself a traditional 1911. There's a few more steps. It doesn't just take eight seconds like it takes the pistol at Makarov. It takes a lot longer to do a 1911. And it's not a competition, folks. I know some of you can do it in just 20 seconds. 
and some of you can do it in a couple minutes. It doesn't matter. It does take longer to take apart the 1911. So for uh, ease of takedown, then Makarov would take the competition if there was one. The Makarov is very concealable and it shoots the 9 by 18 Makarov round. Okay. Now the Russians made this round, the 9 by 18 Makarov round, because they didn't want ammunition that could easily fit in the guns of their foes. All right, so they made a, a very exclusive round to the Makarov because it's 9 by 18 Makarov. And it also fits in other guns like the P64 and other such 9 by 18 Makarov shooting guns. But this was made exclusively to fit only their weapons so that it can't be used against them should it be found by the enemy. Interesting, huh? So this is a 90 to 95 grain projectile average, and it travels at about 1,033 feet per second, right? In potency, it's a little bit stronger than the uh, 380 automatic, or to you Europeans, the 9mm Kurs, and it is less potent than our standard 9mm round over here. So there you go. Now, if you want the 9x18 Makarov, I suggest you get it as soon as possible because the supplies are dwindling and the price is going up. Four or five years ago, the price was probably $100, $150. A couple years ago, it was probably $250. I got this one for $300 and the price is steadily increasing. I recommend getting it soon before they become stupid expensive for what they are. The reason it's getting more and more expensive is because not only is the supply dwindling, but they just don't make these anymore. So get them while they're hot. That's one thing about the Makarov, and it, it is at a disadvantage for accessories and other such things because not too many people have the Makarov, and it's not as common a gun as the 1911, which is showered with accessories, holsters, sights, etc., etc. So, you know... Uh, those are two things to consider with these pistols. The Makarov, it's a bit more rare of a gun, so uh, accessories are going to be hard to find. Very few holsters that are designed for it, and very few accessories that are designed for it. And the rounds, they cost right around, I'd say, uh, between 40 Smith & Wesson, 45 ACP in price. Unless you're getting, of course, the steel Russian ammunition, which, of course, you can't shoot in most indoor ranges. You might want to consider that. Now, 45 ACP, John Browning's design, and I am not going to take this thing apart. No, too much of a bear for a video. You can watch just about any other YouTube video and watch somebody taking theirs apart. Just do that. But 1911, again, this shoots eight rounds of 45 ACP, but I believe the classic, the Colt, shot seven rounds. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that is true. This is a very much weightier gun than the Makarov. This weighs about 39 to 40 ounces, whereas this one weighs about 28 ounces. So this is very heavy to carry around all day, unless you're carrying it around strong side carry. And even if you're doing that, you know you've got this thing on. So you've got this, kind of heavy, and it's also bigger. As you can see, obviously it's bigger, but it's 8.6 inches long, 5.5 inches high. And there's your key for not being able to wear this in the waistband very comfortably. And I know some of you guys can, but most people can't. 5.5 inches, right? That's about an extra inch added on to that pistol right there. This is key. This is a lot of distance here. And it's 1.4 inches wide. Not too bad. I mean, it's not a very wide pistol, but it does shoot the 45 ACP. So that's not bad for its width. Generally, these are 39 to 40 ounces again, and it has a 5-inch barrel. But the projectiles, let's pull them forward here. You've got the 45 ACP projectile right here. That is about 230 grains, and it travels an average of 825 to 900 feet per second. All right? So this is a sledgehammer. This is hitting you very hard. This is what the village people call a man-stopper. So this is a very heavy round, very considerable, and great for using with self-defense. So it's all subjective.
Do you want the 1,033 feet per second 90 grain projectile right here? Or do you want the 230 grain projectile that goes 825 feet per second but leaves a path through the person that you can drive your bike through? It is, again, all subjective. So the choice is yours. Not that you have to make a choice. Get both. They're great to have in your collection if you like old surplus guns and traditional guns like this. So, I mean, it's really fantastic. Now let's discuss the recoils. The 9x18 Makarov is very easy to take in this pistol right here. Being 28 ounces, it's a solid steel pistol, so it's very, very manageable. The recoil is not bad. It's a heavier gun. Take, for example, if you've got the 380 automatic and you're shooting it out of one of those little mouse guns like the LCP uh, or the TCP 380 from Taurus or whatever. Very snappy. But the 9x18 Makarov is being fired from a much bigger gun. And because it's the blowback design type of pistol, it's that much easier to take. I like shooting the Makarov. Now for shooting the 1911, a lot of people get intimidated about the 1911 because it's shooting the 45 ACP round. Particularly new people get a little bit intimidated. That is, of course, until they shoot the thing and then they discover that they absolutely love the thing and they have to go out and get themselves one pronto as soon as they shoot it. And that's usually the way it goes. A lot of people start off being indifferent about the 1911. They shoot it and then they want it. The 45 ACP round is not hard to take when you're shooting it out of a pistol that's 39 to 41 ounces. The recoil for this pistol is very, very manageable. Even people with compromised hand strength can shoot a 1911 and hold it on target because the weight of this pistol holds that muzzle down so that recoil is quite nice, as a matter of fact. A lot of people prefer shooting their 1911s just because of the ease of shooting them. Okay, now we're looking at the 1911 and keep in mind, it's single action. The Pistola Makarov is double action, single action. So if that makes a difference to you, those are things that you want to take into consideration. But both pistols, I swear, if you have a pistol collection and you want to complete it, this is the way to go. Both of these pistols are just magnificent to have. I love shooting both of these pistols. So I just wanted to bring them to you just like this and in this format. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I am too improper. My email address is scrolling across the bottom of the screen as we speak right now. That's too improper at gmail.com. Right? And I will answer you if you're polite about what you're saying and if I have the time. Also look me up at too improper channel on Facebook or Twitter at too improper. Thanks for watching, folks. God bless America and keep on protecting your families and yourselves. You know, it's always the right thing to do.